this is on. I don't think I've ever used this phone more than a few times to record anything. <clears throat> uh, hey, Dad. So, uh, we're all here in New York at the motel. It's, uh, Queens, actually. In Astoria, near the NQ. Uh, Rebecca's off getting batteries for something. Sean's in his room doing whatever Sean does. And, uh, you're out getting some food. Me? Well, I'm supposed to be getting ready to break into some offices in the financial district. Feels just like prepping for one of your old training drills, actually. Ten years go by, and then you show up, and it's like, uh, like I, I was never gone. And we're right back to the ball busting and the conspiracies and the paranoia. Only this time, I believe you. I believe every word. You know, I don't even think you know the half of it. I, I don't think you know how much I've seen, how much I've, I've learned in just a few weeks. Everything, really. I feel like, uh, like I've, I've lived a thousand years, or, or, or ten thousand, maybe. It's impossible to explain. But when you see that much of the world through the eyes of so many, you can't help but be sad. And to see all these incredible, intelligent people fight the same battles, make the same mistakes over and over again. Because culture and knowledge and history, these things, they aren't passed on through our genes. Every kid on Earth needs to relearn the basics, how to live, how to survive, how to stand up for, for what's right. So much is lost in the transfer. So much is added to every generation. It's a shame. I mean, over and over, everything must be learned again. I met Clay, Dad. Clay Kesmerick, in the Animus. I knew him by his Abstergo handle, Subject 16. My, uh, my predecessor. And he showed me things. He passed them to me, just before he died. Or got deleted, or whatever. Everything he'd learned, everything he'd seen, So, um, I guess you, you trained him, huh? After I left, he really looked up to you, and now that I've seen through his eyes, I, I think I understand why. I'm glad you had him around, even if I wasn't there. The things he showed me. Unbelievable things. And I never... Shit. All right, I'll back in a second. Okay, uh, it's been a few weeks since the last recording. Sorry about that. Of course, I guess it's just a few seconds for you. A little leap down the playlist. Um, anyway, uh, I was talking about Clay. Uh, Kesmeric, uh, Subject 16. So, when I fell into a coma back in Italy and woke up in the Animus Black Room, it was, um, so calming. It felt like I, uh, I had woken up into a dream, a haze, a, a dream where none of this mess had ever happened. Uh, felt like I should just be getting ready for another day of pouring drinks at bad weather, and uh, another day of complaining about being between girlfriends and wondering what the hell to do with myself. But uh, when I saw Clay, just sitting there, it started to come back piece by piece, and when he told me about Lucy, I, uh, <laughs> fuck, you know, it, it hurt, you know, you know, realizing that I killed her, without thinking or feeling anything, not at the time anyway, well, and things just kept piling on, there were more memories of Ezio and Altair, and first civilization, and then right before he vanished, Clay passed on his memories to me. He showed me everything he had seen and lived through, and it was, it was 
was brief, but overwhelming. Not really sure how to explain. He saw glimpses of Adam and Eve and their escape from slavery. He saw the beginning and the end of the war between the first Civ and humans. He saw Minerva, Juno, and Tinia trying to work out their, their calculations. At least that's what they called them. They, they had these tools, these powerful uh, machines that could predict possible futures. Not what was going to happen, but what, uh, but what could happen. Probabilities. And, well, they spent a lot of energy trying to figure out what was the most likely scenario for the future. Theirs and ours. And in the end, I guess they figured I was their most likely candidate. Some guy named Desmond, living at the beginning of the 21st century of the Common Era. But which Desmond was the right one? Because, you see, probability is a weird thing. It can branch out in so many ways. Which version of me did they need? Was it the Desmond who got married early and had a son? One who stayed single in New York? Or, or was it the Desmond who moved to San Francisco to be a waiter? Desmond who worked at an auto body shop in Chicago, or maybe it was the me who never ran away from his parents in the first place. First Civ had countless variations to choose from, but in the end, the uh, lucky one was me. I'm the Desmond their best calculations spit out. I'm the Desmond they left their messages for, and I guess I have to live with that honor. Me. 
But maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch, that was the clue, wasn't it? You let me win because I had been so patient. And I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. Maybe for you, they're, they're one and the same. You know, either way, I'm happy to know that both my mentor and my dad are looking out for me that day. I didn't understand that then. I think I do now. So, this will be a short one, Dad. Uh, something to remember me by if things go south. If I don't make it out of the temple today. I've tried to be optimistic about all this, but I, uh, I just can't. I think spending all this time in Connor's memories has made me anxious. I mean, his story is so painful in so many ways. But still, he never lost hope. Even when his faith and others eroded. I can only believe that what we are doing is the right thing that I can stop this disaster. I know this. I mean, the technology is there, waiting for us to use it. I'm the final piece of the puzzle. Something in my genes, or my memories. Some final piece of code to switch the whole thing on. That's why I'm here. That's why they brought me here. Only, uh... I, I don't know what I'll have to give up in return. My sanity, my life, it's, it's impossible to say. I do know this. Our battle with the Templars will not be over. And whatever's inside that temple is not an ending. It's just another chapter in this, this endless story. And it'll be your job, and Mom's, and, and Sean's, and Rebecca's, to keep turning the pages. You know, I, I keep thinking about something Orson Welles once said. Something like, if you, if you want a happy ending, it all depends on where you stop telling your story. So maybe, maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's how people keep marching forward. If something goes wrong and they're dead, something happens to me. When you tell my story years from now, please tell them the one about how I lost my way and then I found it again, just in time to save the world and, and just end it there. That'll keep everyone smiling. Tell her I love you both.